So this week in worship, we talked about the end of 1 John, which is that call for us to have confidence, to know that you know that you have eternal life. I love the way in which John in his gospel talks about having eternal life and the way in which he bookends that at the end of 1 John by talking about knowing that you have eternal life. That assurance of eternal life is something that I grew up hearing that you could have, knowing that you could have, yeah. um, but not really knowing why. I was in a faith tradition that, that really emphasized knowing it, um, but I just don't remember focusing on and hearing the theological reason. It was more a focus on you know you have, um, as opposed to a faith-based focus where we recognize the reality of the gospel and Christ in our place. Um, so th this Sunday, as we walked through, what does it mean to know that you have eternal life and have confidence in your eternal life? Uh, I hope that you recognize that the reason for confidence is outside of those good works uh, that you should be doing and is based on what Christ alone has done. So that's why I had uh, Sam and Ashlyn sing that song calling upon us to stand upon the gospel um, this week. Yeah, um, I know personally in my faith walk, uh, I dealt with significant bouts of uh, a lack of assurance in college and uh, at different di points in my life. And uh, I always found myself in a similar trap um, where it was essentially like, well, I don't feel like I'm saved. Um, and anytime I had someone examine uh, those, those feelings, they would bring me back to the scriptures and say, well, did you believe God again about what he said? Um, and I'm, I'm kind of hearing Christ's voice where he says, blessed are those who believe because of the words that I say. Uh, even though in the context, he's talking about disciples who believed from the word rather than from his miracles. Um, isn't it true that we're often kind of looking for, I don't know, some miracle experience to like fill us with assurance when we believe the word and we simply need to return. Um, but I was thinking through some of those things and uh, came across a clip from Tim Keller where he was uh, kind of lamenting how uh, he didn't approach um, some pastoral counseling scenarios related to this in a certain way where you have a guy simply saying, you know, I know that uh, God's forgiven me, but I can't forgive myself. And uh, it took him many years to try to discern how to ap approach that. Um, did you have something you can add? Yeah, I think that's, that's a common question that we get in ministry. Um, so, uh, you know, and I think Keller's valuable in that. Yeah. Uh, he essentially got around to, uh, I'll paraphrase quite a bit, is... Um, Anytime that we have believed on Christ for salvation um, and we say something like, well, I know God forgave, forgave me, but I can't forgive myself. We're not actually trusting in God's decree of forgiveness. We're not trusting in the gospel of God. We're trusting in uh, some other version that we think will give us the feedback so that we can, quote unquote, feel uh, forgiven the way that we wanted to. And one of the, the evidences that this is the case is now this false God, this counterfeit God is turning around to curse us when it promised to bless us. Yeah, uh, that, that reminder that forgiveness is external of our actions, um, but it can easily creep up in all of us to forget the reality of the forgiveness. Um, and th then we forget to trust in the goodness of the gospel. We lose the confidence we should have in our eternal life. And we lose the gratitude that we should have that calls us to Christian obedience. Um, and it's just a, a, a bad cycle uh, when we go down that route, um, as opposed to a good cycle when we begin uh, uh, reflecting upon the goodness of the gospel, which calls us to a, a lifestyle of gratitude and obedience uh, that leads us to more gratitude and obedience. Um, but we can fall prey to those counterfeit gods and that, that idolatrous tendency. Uh, you know, we, reflecting again upon childhood, uh, growing up, I attended a, a private Christian school, fundamentalist background, and, you know, a lot of Old Testament passages to work through and, and drawing an idol and drawing the Israelites, bowing to idols and 
you know, when you read the Old Testament, they're constantly bowing to idols um, and the call to, to abandon their idolatry is not something we see in my mind as much in the New Testament. Um, but it's a shorter period of time than the New Testament covers. Um, but so for a lot, so for so long, I was thinking of idolatry as just things that we bow to, like uh, the Asherah poles, the Baals, the Molex, those types yeah. of things, um, and neglecting how easy idolatry can creep into our lives. Um, and I'm really grateful for Keller's book, Counterfeit Gods. Um, with the, that money, sex, power, and other idol, uh, idols that can creep into our lives, um, taking that place of God. And that's a constant battle for me to make sure that uh, I'm not letting good things become God things in my yeah. life. Yeah, so maybe an encouragement I'd have for you all listening and for, for us here during this Christmas season um, it's one of the things I hoped to communicate with that weird, I don't know, you can call it mashup or medley of come thou long expected Jesus with Jesus, what a friend for sinners, is that uh, we can absolutely be confident in our, our eternal salvation, even though we do struggle and fight against sin uh, in the here and now. Uh, we get to, through Christ, to approach God boldly with confidence, though not with arrogance, like you <laughs> mentioned a few weeks back. Um, but I wanted to call your attention back to some of the lyrics and why I chose to do those things that way. Um, not only is it aesthetically kind of Christmassy uh, to do Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, where we're anticipating Christ to come and be the Messiah um, in the ways in which he's uh, foretold in the, New, in the Old Testament. Um, but uh, the phrase I really like to think about is, in the second half of the first verse of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus is, uh, it describes the Messiah as Israel's strength and consolation. So their strength and their comfort. And uh, when we transition then to what Jesus is for us as his, this great friend to us as sinners, and uh, we immediately think about him being our strength and our comfort, we say, Jesus, what a strength in weakness. Let me hide myself in him, tempted, tried, and sometimes failing, he, my strength, my victory wins. So as we're looking through all the ways in which God has gloriously worked to bring about uh, the Messiah, um, found in Jesus, revealed in the scriptures this Christmas season, I want us to also think about the ways in which he is a great comfort to us as sinners to both take the penalty and punishment for our sin, but also empower us to continue coming back to God when we fall because he's already made uh, mm. satisfaction for them. Um, so keep working through, I love the phrase in the, it's I think it's the fourth verse of Jesus, What a Friend for Sinners, but we sang it as the third verse of this medley on Sunday. Um, it says, he has granted me forgiveness. I am his and he is mine. And when that temptation to lack confidence, that lack of assurance and faith um, comes to you, I want you to remember the truth that in Christ, um, we he is ours because he made us his. Um, so he came for us. He brought us in. He's with us now, regardless of how we feel. Believe his words, uh, not your feelings. And then um, lastly, getting all the way to looking to the future, Christ having come to accomplish his work as the Messiah. Um, this reality that we can be re-comforted with again and again um, is the true reality that will come to full fruition in the future. So uh, we get to the second verse of come thou long expected Jesus. And we think through um, born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now thy gracious kingdom bring. Um, so I hope that's an encouragement to you this Christmas season that uh you can also have great confidence uh, to come before the throne of grace yet again and to be reminded of who our true God is um, and to cast off any idol that would offer you false forgiveness and then turn and curse you um, when our God has already removed the curse from us. And we'll celebrate more of that this Sunday um, as we continue in Advent. 
uh, thinking about uh, the real reason for the season and not even letting the, the Christmas season on its own be an idol, but worshiping the Savior for his first coming and looking forward to his coming to make all things well. We'll see you Sunday.